And once again, we have a somewhat unusual, somewhat intriguing, and difficult to explain discovery from essentially our own bodies. A team of scientists, whose paper you can find in the description, discovered these unusual, I guess, life forms, for the lack of better words, living inside of us that we've never seen before in any other species. And I guess more intriguingly, we don't actually know exactly what they are. They don't seem to be bacteria, and they don't seem to be viruses. They're essentially something much simpler, potentially somewhat similar to types of viroids we've seen in plants. And today I actually wanted to talk about this because this is technically a really important discovery. Whatever this is, these unusual, extremely simple life forms seem to have an ability to control bacteria inside of us, which by extension then control us. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to focus on this new, very, very interesting study with a simple title, Viroid-like Colonists of Human Microbiomes. In this case, I think the title pretty much tells us everything. Something very unusual inside of us that's probably been there for a very long time, but whose actual nature, and more importantly, whose purpose, we know nothing about. And at the moment, because we actually have no idea what these are, they've been given a nickname, obelisks. Mostly because they seem to actually form these somewhat long structures, somewhat circular structures, that do resemble an obelisk. But in this case, this is not just one or two, Thousands of these have been discovered inside, with different combinations, different structures, and obviously, different purposes. But it's quite likely that the three-dimensional shape of these unusual structures would resemble some kind of a long organic molecule, either circular or spiral in shape. And so, what exactly are these, and what are they actually doing inside of us? But I think to understand them, we actually have to take a look at something else first. Viroids. Viroids, despite their name, are not viruses. Normally, viruses contain either RNA or DNA molecules, and they always have some kind of a capsule protecting everything, which we usually refer to as a protein coat. But viroids are even simpler, and they're always RNA molecules that do not contain any protection or any coat. For many years, scientists have actually thought that maybe viruses evolved from viroids, with viroids basically being sort of like the beginning of everything. Visually, the difference is something like this. Viroid is basically a free RNA molecule that's also able to become infectious or turn into a pathogen, but it's just not as resilient and not as advanced as a virus. But the reason we know about viroids, or actually the reason why they're important, is really because plant biologists discovered that many different infections inside various plants, such as potatoes, were actually caused because of a genomic interaction of plants with viroids with some of the first discoveries focusing on potatoes. And though they're not always actually destructive, or basically they're not always pathogenic, in many cases, viroids are actually quite devastating to various plants. They often cause a lot of deformation in potatoes, they also cause crops and various flowers to disappear completely, and they generally cause a lot of issues for a lot of different crops. But they're not viruses. They seem to be very different. But more recently, Researchers discovered that it's not just plants. They also seem to affect various types of bacteria and potentially even animals. And though this right here was actually the first confirmed viroid discovered back in 1971, since then quite a few more have been discovered in a lot of different organisms. And they essentially generally use their own way of replication by using a type of a RNA molecule and then using the cell machinery to try to create more copies. But they're not as damaging as viruses, and they also generally do not actually destroy the cell. And so, as a result of all of these individual discoveries, it was always assumed that maybe these are just relics of viruses, or basically something that viruses became afterwards, when they became more advanced. As a matter of fact, it was even proposed that maybe these are actually some of the living relics from the very exciting idea behind the RNA world, how the life formed on the planet. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. But even more intriguingly, not so long ago, it was also discovered that at least one virus, or something that we thought was a virus, that infects humans, hepatitis D virus, could actually be a subviral agent extremely similar to a viroid in its structure. Or, I guess, a kind of a hybrid. Not really a virus, but not really a viroid either. And so, in essence, for many years, we've known about these viroids 
existing in a lot of plants and quite a lot of bacteria. But more recently, the researchers in this study wanted to actually analyze human genome by using a slightly different technique. They wanted to analyze active genes from various microbes living inside of us in order to discover if any of those genes, specifically RNA molecules, would form any circular shapes. Something that normally is associated with viruses or viroids. And so in this case, by using a relatively complex software that would analyze the existing catalog of a lot of active genes inside microbes, and then comparing this to samples received from approximately 470 individuals living in North America, they actually ended up discovering something really unusual. Ok, first a quick side note. If you've never seen the video I made about human microbiome or what's living inside our guts and inside our bodies, you may want to check out that video first. In a nutshell though, I guess a super short version of that video is that inside of you right now there is a huge amount of bacteria. Actually more bacterial cells than the cells in your entire body that you're made out of. Here we're talking about nearly a hundred trillion different bacteria that are all doing their own thing. And the thing is, they have a lot of influence on our body. Many of them are quite essential for our survival and many of them provide a lot of support and can even send signals or communicate which can then be received by our body and will even make its way to our brain. And so what I've actually discussed in that video is that how a lot of bacteria inside of us technically influences who we are, our personalities, our thoughts, our emotions and well basically pretty much everything that makes us us. So human microbiome is actually super super important. And that's one of the reasons a lot of scientists are always trying to discover something new about it. And so in this case, the samples actually came from human mouth and quite a lot of them came from human feces, or basically our poop. And we know that both are filled with a lot of bacterial cells. But then once they analyzed these samples, they did discover something really unusual that absolutely no one expected. By sequencing DNA of various bacteria in human gut and human mouth, they discovered that approximately 7-10% to of gut bacteria and approximately half of mouth bacteria contain signs of these unusual circular RNA viroids. Or actually they're not really viroids because they're something entirely different. The first confirmation came from a very very common bacteria in our mouth, Streptococcus sanguinis, that's responsible for cavities and for us going to the dentist. And so all of these bacteria contain these unusual structures. And they were all tiny molecules of RNA, much smaller than a virus, but all containing instructions for how to replicate or even transfer information that can technically be read by a bacterial cell. And because we've never seen anything like this, for now at least they're going to be known as obelisks, with quite a lot of these RNA molecules just referred to as obelins, obelin 1, obelin 2 and so on. And pretty much all of them seem to form rod shapes or cylindrical structures, but really small structures, smaller than a virus. But once again, because this is not a virus, it's quite unlikely that they actually kill the bacteria. So their true purpose and their actual reason for existing is currently unknown. But for now they've been described as something that's maybe a little bit more complex than a typical viroid, but not as complex as a virus. They all seem to contain circular shapes, they're all made out of RNA and they have no protein coat as well. Although I guess what's even more intriguing, this study actually discovers something like 30,000 of them inside of us. And that's just in a sample of 470 people. And though most of them seem to be located in the mouth microbiome, at least a tenth is present in the gut. But I guess the biggest question that nobody can answer right now is, so are they actually good or bad? Are they helping the bacteria or are they making them sicker and thus cause us problems? At the moment one of the assumptions is that they could maybe modify the genetic activity of the host bacteria, which could then affect us in some way. But just like viruses, it's quite possible that some of them are actually dangerous or potentially disruptive to biological activity, but some of them could be helpful or even essential. This is actually related to this other video you can check out in the description, but we know for a fact that a really important virus is actually the reason you and I even exist. Several viral infections and several viruses are actually responsible for human fetal development and are responsible for turning us into who we are. And there's actually even a recent study that talks a little bit more about this, which we'll discuss in one of the future videos really soon. So maybe subscribe if you want to learn more. And so either way, the only thing we know about these unusual structures or these unusual things right now is that 
even though they seem to resemble viroids, in other words, they have a relatively similar, somewhat circular shape, their genetic sequencing seems to be entirely different, suggesting that they have a very different purpose. But what this purpose is might remain a mystery for quite some time. I mean, once again, something like 30,000 of these have been discovered inside of us, and so they probably have a very different reason for existing. Nevertheless, this is still a really exciting and somewhat important discovery, because we never even knew anything like this existed inside of us. Okay, technically not really inside of us, inside the bacteria that lives inside of us. But because a lot of these bacteria are technically part of us, in some sense these obelisks are also part of us as well. But I think this is going to remain a mystery for a very long time. There's no way we're going to discover what this is anytime soon. But once we have some explanations, or once someone actually does discover what this is, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, obelisks are going to remain a mystery. Anyway, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.